Philips Sky 75100. In last episodes, I showed you bros how to change stock controllers to that kind of tiny advanced VC. And to be honest, after over two and a half weeks of using it pretty hard, I still love it. Because this is the most advanced controller for $100, and thanks to VCs, we can make our e school street legal. This is quite important, especially in Europe. We can connect that kind of VC to the application and set a couple profiles. In one profile, we can set no limits, so full throttle is full throttle. But when we set in other profile limits, like 20 km per hour and max power 200 watt, if police will stop us, they add full throttle and we are street legal, so there is no fine, everything is okay. That's why I love VCs, because they are open source and we can adjust almost any aspect of this controller. But as you saw in my videos, it's kind of easy to overheat those controllers. I using them on my Xtron X30, I set max power 5000 watt and every single time when I use my scoot over some super sloppy hill or there is some deeper sound, controllers will overheat in like 5 seconds and I have to wait until they cool down. But to be honest, if there will be not so many sloppy hills and not so many deep sound and if you would like to smash it full throttle, then this controller will be mostly under 65 degrees, so it's really not that bad. But I don't recommend them for some power demand e-scoots, e, e bikes because yeah. This one cannot split the heat, but this thing, this is newest Flip Sky 75100, so we've got again the same name, but as you can see it looks a little bit different, we've got now big aluminium shell. Actually, the first thing which I noticed is that this controller got the weight like four of these, so we've got big aluminium shell to split out the heat, and now we've got Alu PCB, which means that all the MOSFETs should be soldered to this aluminum PCB, so they should not overheat. This is how it should be done at the first time, because over here we've got between the MOSFETs and aluminum shell the caption tape, which is not the best idea, honestly. So let's open this VC and check if they fix the issue. Did you notice that this name is like tilted? Kind of funny. And of course, this is dual version, so you've got two controllers built into one board. You know what bros, it's still in one piece, so maybe at first let's do some small size comparison. So the length and the width is almost the same like those two controllers, but this new version is way thicker. Check this one out. So we can save even more space, that is kind of nice. And compared to standard stock 45 amp controller, which we can find in Lauti Ti30, Boyeda, etc. This one controller is way bigger. Yeah, there is actually nothing to compare. Check this one out. This one is less advanced and it's like two times heavier than this thing, which is already pretty heavy compared to these two. So that's why I don't like those because we cannot set actually anything in those and they are big and heavy. But yeah, let's check what is inside. Moment of true rolls. Did they fix the issue? Let's open it slowly and gently. Slowly and gently, and we are inside. Check this beauty. Now it looks like some proper VC. Yep, there is no any caption tape inside. Now all those black MOSFETs are soldered to this kind of thick aluminum plate. And between this plate and bottom aluminum part, shell, there is lots of thermal paste all around the controller, so it looks like now it will be a little bit harder to overheat this controller. So yeah, this is how it should be done at the first time. Yeah, it looks really good. So I could say good job Flipsky, but I will wait, because in next episode I will try to overheat this controller. So I will install it on my Xtron X30, I will set 90 amps, and if this thing will not overheat, then let's be honest, there is nothing better on the market because for $260 we can buy stock controllers which are nothing compared to advanced VEC. I'm receiving so many messages, bros, about those 75100 and most of them, like 99%, is positive because now, thanks to VEC, you can control the power in your scoot because the throttle is super smooth and the most common question is how many amps you should set on 
regenerative braking and I do recommend don't set more than 10 amps. Thanks to it, the battery in your scooter will survive a little bit longer. And yes, you can turn on traction control, so when you hit full throttle, the wheels will not slip over the ground. So yeah, this is kind of advanced, but if this thing will be better than old version, we will check it in next episode. So far, it looks delicious, isn't it? So bros, if you have any questions, leave it in comment section. I will back to you and try to help. Also, love to mention this, like in other VCs, we don't have on-off switch, so you, we have to buy extra one. All links in the description, you can buy something like electronic switch with one button, but I do recommend do it yourself, loop key, I showed it in last episode how to do it. And of course, this one don't have Bluetooth module, so we have to spend extra $25 to Bluetooth module and it's super useful because thanks to it you can connect controller to your smartphone and set anything in real time. You can even see data like telemetry, 